Um, our beloved, beloved pitchfork placed it at number 166. There's the obligatory hawker you've just thrown out there. Uh, <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to another Friday installment of the Audio Files. It is Viewer Request Friday, and we are here to listen to a song offered up by one of y'all out there in the listening audience. This song in particular uh, was offered up by Joe Manji. Great name, Joe Manji. Um, and it was offered up in our review of the uh, song Friction by Television. John is going to be going off and giving this a listen by luck of the draw. Um, it is by an artist named Jim O'Rourke. Uh, how, if at all, familiar are you with Jim O'Rourke? I I do know him. I do yeah. know of him. Yeah. I don't want to steal some of your thunder. You've done the research. So no, I know well, a particular band that he played in. Yeah. Yes. But, um, yeah. It's one of my favorites. He was a uh, later period, which I don't really pay that much attention to. Apart from one of the albums that he played on, was it so decent? And um, also, I've got one of his albums. Oh, and nice. I don't know why, but I think I read somewhere someone said to me you should check this out, so I downloaded it. It's called The Visitor, and it is one track, thirty-eight minutes long, mm. and it's it's really cool and it's instrumental. Nice, yes. Yeah. All right, yeah. And all that all that checks yeah. out per what I do very little but of what, of what i knew going into this and then what i've learned as i've uh done the research for this episode but yeah i was kind of on the sans the having an album i was kind of on the same uh playing field as you about what i knew about him so this was kind of a fun experience just going to say that right mm. out of the gate um kind of digging in and learning a little bit more about this uh what i who i would consider a kind of a pioneer in his own right um but yeah go off and give this track memory lame uh, listen and uh, come back and let Joe Manji uh, and everybody else know what you thought. Okay. Quickly, it sounds like it's building to something. I really like that start. It's all these different layers. It's just like ripples. Really pretty, really pretty. And the thumbnail's interesting as well. It's quite a gamble to speak out of place Those things could kill you, but so could your face What occupies me, pays All right, come on, that guy, that guitar is lovely it's just full of character it's like another voice and i really like the percussion st, st, really sounding good as well god we're one minute 25 into it already but i'm loving the start he's a low rent because funness makes the heart grow absent these things i say might seem kind of cool something my heart to you looking at you reminds me of looking at the sun and how the blind are so damn lucky those holes on 
on your face could be used better ways. Breathing's a distraction when you chatter away. These things I say might seem to be lies, to seem risque or sensationalized. And too many people can remember your name. Walking you down memory lane. These things I say I seem to offend, but not half as much as I'd like to intend. 'Cause listen to you reminds me of a motor's endless drone and how the deaf are so damn lucky. Really interesting. I mean, the the drums and percussion are really cool. Way through these these different beats, different tempos. That's the second time it's slowed down, like it's running out. And then he just pops another coin in the meter, and we spring back up again. I know he's inventive, but compared to what I've heard before, this is a different kettle of fish completely. Then I wouldn't need my senses at all. These things I say might seem out of line, but day to day I'm right every time. Looking at you reminds me of looking at the sun. blew by guess i guess because it was so interesting i mean just when you think you've got a handle on the song it changes or kind of wriggles into a different path god that was so interesting and inventive and charming um i really really enjoyed that i'm gonna have to listen to this about another 15 times to get a handle on it I've made some notes, but God knows. I feel like I've missed loads. I mean, the drums and the percussion were so cool. 
all the way through. I love that sort of double time on the on the whatever it was, like pitter patter. The slowing down that last time when it was just strumming and then it filled back in again. The backing vocals as well. Um kind of like like seventies feel to them that's really sort of warm. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, this is a winner. This is really good. Um yeah, I enjoyed this a lot. Right, let's um let's go back and chat with Andy and find out some more. Okay. So you've returned from memory lame. What say you of this song? Hmm. First of all, um thanks, Jim Angie, for um suggesting this. Big fan of the film. Um <laughs> Robin Williams, um, you can't go wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, first thing I've got to say, interesting thumbnail. I'll leave it there. I won't yeah. say anymore. Yeah. So the, the opening has this lovely jaunty little number that's sort of like backed with the, the drummer t- keeping time. But then it starts to grow and shift and another layers come in, the guitar and a bit of piano, and it becomes this beautiful rippling movement. Um, it's just so pretty, really mm. nice. And then a simple sort of drum beat comes in, and it's quite you know, doof, doof. and then a short fill, and we're into the singer joins in, which I b- believe is probably Mister Iraq. And knowing what I do know of him, which isn't very much, he probably played every fucking instrument on this song as well. But anyway, um, I believe this is the first time I've heard his voice. I'm pretty sure it is, and. To be honest with you, it's okay at first hearing, but it does kind of grow in me during the song. But that's not the headline here. Um, Because he starts singing, and then after a couple of lines, he stops, and quite rightly, to let in this electric guitar speak. And what a voice this guitar has. It's like another character has been introduced. Um, If this was a sitcom, I'm thinking of Cheers, the studio audience would all applaud as the guitar walks onto the set. Uh, it, it was like instant charisma, mm. and just that short riff, and it made me smile immediately. Down and out. Just really, really cool. Um, secondly, and we get a lot more of this later, but the drums and percussion have already got my attention. I thought they were just unbelievable. Yeah. Throughout the song, the drummer changes beat patterns and tempos and syncopation. Um, and it goes into this bit where it's a... Dun, 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 and it's like different, not fills, but, you know, different um, segues into the next sort of four bars. And that sort of... I would describe it as grasping um, hi-hat actions. Lovely. And it's there all the time. And it's just... And it is wonderful. So, Even Mr. and I'm sorry, but you but just that because there's this part. I think it's around the four minute marker where he's he's on the hi hats, just doing like this tight little, tss, 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 and it's so tight and crisp that even though it's not this big thing, you know what I mean? It's still just so fucking clean and pure. It's like oh man, that's such great drumming. And if that's him on drums, like excellent because like you, yeah. the guitars and the drums spoke to me probably a little bit more of the drums. But man, I was like oh my god, this is really good drumming. Yeah, really good. So, Mr. Rock continues singing. And because of the uh, aforementioned drums in particular, there's a lovely sort of swing to it. It just mm. grooves. Um, there's more Ambrosia in that guitar part speaking again. And then we get into a, cor- a sort of chorusy bit, but it's a weird sort of chorus because it isn't a sing along y, grab your attention chorus. Yeah. Um, but the chord change and then the way he sings it, it just reminded me of. McCartney sort of wings era. Mm. Uh, he goes sort of looking at you, and then it reminds me. You know, it goes down for that reminds. Mm. So I've got the line. I've got the lines for this, I believe. So anyway, looking at you reminds me of, and that's the bit I thought was McCartney uh, of looking at the sun and how the blind are so damn lucky, which I thought was quite funny. <laughs> um, and then just as he sings the lucky, we start to run out of steam winding down like a knackered old clockwork toy to some laboured strums. And that's where it becomes almost this machine that is, you know, you know, car, 
train, whatever, it's coming down. You can feel the, the pistons, you know. Happily, the drummer manages to get things going again. Come on, boys, and we're off into the second verse. Um, same lovely groove. He even does a bit more, you know, this like patterns in the are oh, just fantastic. And then he goes to another chorus where he switches the lines, I believe, something like listening to you. So it reminds me of and this is about how the deaf are so damn lucky, which I thought mm -hmm. was quite interesting. Because the meter needs another coin at this point. So then then we go back going again. Um now normally I'd be all Mr. Grumpy about the, the artist pissing about too much. But I've totally bought into the song by now and I'm just simply enjoying it too much. Um and he does at the beginning of the sort of third verse, I guess you call it. He says, I, I caught a line saying, then I wouldn't need my senses at all. So he's obviously he's mentioned looking and and then there's another looking at you. And he's just talking about it's like looking at the sun too long. So it's not, you know, overly complimentary. <laughs> um, but um, and then we're into this really pretty strum section, as you mentioned, with this sort of double or even triple time sort of I call it tappings. <laughs> almost pitter patter uh, from the drummer. And with that, there was some lovely 1970s style backing vocals. Oh, and it's like, you know, all of that sort of almost middle of the roady sort of American Rocky. But mm. it just sounds so nice and wholesome. I love I really like that as well. Um, then there's more of that simple beat you get from the drummer that you got right at the start of the song that just a dun dun dun. And then we get these in and out rhythmic sections for a couple of bars where it sort of goes and stops the strumming, then it goes back into a pattern and then stops and comes out. Mm -hmm. And then it segues into a speeded up version of that slow down strumming. So it's just a bit quicker and it's strumming away and it climbs. Then it's like you think it's not slowing down though. It's starting to climb upwards in the scale. Um, and it's some other, I don't know if it's synth or whatever it is, is just giving some notes behind it. So it's all, starting to fill out and rise. And then we just want to finish with this last sort of ringing of the acoustic guitar sounding absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Um, the whole thing just flew by. Honestly, I was shocked when it finished. And the song, just when you think you've got a handle on it, it changes and wriggles and goes off in a different direction. Although it was so interesting, so inventive, and really charming as well. Yeah. The drums were by far the star, but the guitars, both acoustic and electric, also sounded superb and almost had their own character, a lovely tone to them. Really enjoyed it. So I love this as a total winner for me. Mm -hmm. Um and only having heard that um I mean that's the the album that I've got, it's more of a sort of sonic landscape. I mean, it starts off with the acoustic guitars and pianos and it goes into various bits, but it's almost, you know, it's like a river you're following. And the banjo section's fun, but you know, it's and it's an epic thirty eight minute thing, so you don't get the same investment you would get into like a six minute song. Yeah. So I just thought this was a bit of an eye opener for me as well. Yeah, I had a very similar experience uh, as you listen to this. All the things that you mentioned kind of stood out to me, kind of like the, the sometimes choppy nature of that acoustic guitar, just hammering at it. Uh, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed this this song myself and giving this a listen. Um, and that's what I was kind of alluding to when I was talking about the, the pleasure of doing this track. And also the, the, the research was pretty interesting, too. So um, I am going to get into that. Yeah. Um, Mr. O'Rourke was born... January 18th, 1969, he's an American musician, multi-instrumentalist, as you mentioned, composer, singer, songwriter, and record producer. He wears several hats. Uh, he's best known for his numerous solo and collaborative music projects, many of which are instrumental, as you also mentioned, uh, and has been acclaimed for his music that spans varied genres, including avant-garde styles, such as ambient, noise, and minimalism. Uh, and styles of rock like indie rock and post rock. He has uh, been associated with the Chicago experimental and improv scene as well as the new as well as with New York City when he relocated to it in 2000 for his tenure as a member of the American indie rock band Sonic Youth, which I think is the common denominator with us and our semi knowledge of this of this gentleman. Um, so O'Rourke uh, has collaborated with and get ready. There's it's kind of like a who's fucking who here. 
uh, with Thurston Moore, Lee Ronaldo, Kim Gordon, Steve Shelley, Derek Bailey, Mats Gustafsson, Mayo Thompson, Bridget Fontaine, Loren Mazakane, uh, Connors, uh, Mersbo, uh, Nurse and the Nurse with Wound, Phil Niblock, Finez, or uh, Organum, Few, Henry Kaiser, uh, and Flying Saucer Attack. And he has produced and um, instrumentally contributed to albums by artists such as, and here's another laundry list. Oh, go ahead, please. I could use a breath. Uh, didn't he do some stuff with Wilco? That's the only thing I know. But yeah, we're getting to it. We are getting to it. But yeah, <laughs> you, are, you are you are correct in that assumption. Um, he was uh, pr- he he has produced uh, and instrumentally and instrumentally contributed to albums by artists such as Sonic Youth. Wilco, if you'd only just let me. <laughs> uh, Stereo Stereo Lab, uh, which we've done recently. Super mm. Pop, uh, which we've also done. Uh, yeah, Kahimi, yeah. Kahimi Car- Carey, uh, Kuruli, John Fahey, Smog, Faust, Tony Conrad, The Red Crayola, Bobby Kahn, Beth Orton, and U.S. Maple. He mixed Wilco's Yankee Hotel Foxtrot album and produced their 2004 album, A Ghost is Born, for which he won a Grammy Award for Best Alternative Album. Uh, O'Rourke yeah. has also, yeah, he's, I mean, this guy is clearly talented in not only just as a musician, but just everything music, it would it would appear. And that um, is a that is a really good album as well. Oh yeah, 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 really definitely. Good. I know. I know if Phil's listening to this, he's definitely thinking the same thing. I know he's a huge Wilco fan. Um, and O'Rourke has also released, uh, many albums under his own name on a variety of labels, exploring a range of electronic and avant-garde styles. His most well-known works may be his series of releases on Drag City Records, which focus on, uh, which focus on more traditional songcraft, Bad Timing in 1997, Eureka in 1999, insignificance in 2001 which i this is the this particular track is off of insignificance the visitor in 2009 which you brought up and you own uh and simple songs in 2015 and the titles of the first four albums all refer to and you look like you already know this so do you want to go ahead and and, and buzz in here with this yeah nicholas rogue films isn't it yeah, 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 Ex- absolutely. Uh, the first bad timing, I fucking hate that film. It's awful. Oh, God, film cool. Insignificance is all right, but and uh, I don't really know the visitor, but bad timing is terrible. But anyway, but, all right. okay. Well, the first three are uh, by direct reference to the film titles. The fourth being titled after a fictional album that that features within Rogue's film, uh, "The Man Who Fell I'm, to Earth." To Earth so. Yeah. Uh, today's track, as I mentioned, Memory Lame, features on the aforementioned album Insignificance, which was released uh, on November 19th of that year, 2001, which I had mentioned. Uh, it peaked at number 35 on the UK uh, Independent Albums chart. Uh, at Metacritic, the album received an average score of 81% based on 16 reviews, uh, indicating universal acclaim, as we know at this point. Um, our beloved, beloved Pitchfork, Place it at number 166. There's the obligatory hawker you've just thrown out there. Uh, yes, uh, they they ranked it at 166 on their list of top 200 albums of the 2000s and scored it an 80 out of 100, as did NME, The Guardian, Uncut, and Q Magazine. Sputnik Music rated the album a 4.5 out of 5, uh, which meets their threshold for the designation of superb. Mm-hmm. Let's get in to these lyrics, many of which you caught and a lot of which are very funny. I got to be honest, listening to this song, I got shades of uh, Darnell and the and the, the Mountain Goats with this kind of fun, playful music and the whimsical the vocals that actually have something more to them lyrically. Uh, so, yeah, mm-hmm. I just got kind of got shades of that. And that's kind of where it took me as, as I gave this a listen. But um it is. Uh, it's quite a gamble to speak out of place. Those things could kill you, but so could your face. What occupies me pays a low rent because fondness makes the heart grow absent. These things I say might seem kind of cruel. So here's something from my heart to you. Looking at you reminds me of looking at the sun and how the blind are so damn lucky. 
Those holes on your face could be used better ways. Breathing is a distraction when you when you chatter away. These things I say might seem to be lies, to seem risque or sensationalized. And to many people uh, can remember, and and too many people can remember your name, always walking you down memory lane. These things I say may seem to offend, but not half as much as I'd like to intend. Because <laughs> listening to you reminds me of a motor's endless drone and how the deaf are so damn lucky. I'd be happy if life came to came to a stall and I wouldn't uh, need my senses at all. These things I say might seem out of line, but day to day, I'm right every time. Looking at you reminds me of looking at the sun too long. You'll find that in no time you'll be talking to yourself along with everybody else. Then you'll despise the look in their eyes. It may be difficult to tell if you're looking at yourself. And you look fine, if you don't mind, that empty look that's on your face. A black hole that's out of place and out of time, in a tight bind to find something smart to say when silence comes your way. And this very, very quick but succinct uh, write-up, uh, or really just quote from a one William Herbert who uh, put this on Rate Your Music, he summed up uh, Memory Lane by writing, a very lyrically acidic hate letter to presumably an ex. You wouldn't uh, know it by the wistful tone of his singing. And yeah, it's just, again, that dynamic of, God, we've talked about it so much and we'll probably continue because there's plenty of songs like this out there, apparently, that capture a mood with the sound, um, but the message of the lyrics is is quite different, uh, or in this case, acidic, like uh, like Mr. Herbert said in his synopsis of the song. I really, really like this one. It was a lot of fun, clever, biting, um, and uh, really made me appreciate him more just from the... Um, take all yeah, the production yeah. stuff but my god this multi-instrumentalist shit that's going on here if that's all him really like kudos just five plus minutes of just great shit on this track yeah i'd say listen to you reading the lyrics it's really well it's like a cro a properly crafted sort of poem but one of these ones where it's designed to be delivered to somebody yeah um and he's doing it in a very it's great because it's polite rudeness, you know. It's well mannered acidity, which I really love. I know. Yeah, and yeah. He, it's, it's the like, hardest to digest when you're the one on the receiving end of it, right? You're like, yeah. like, yeah. And you can imagine him smiling, you know, yeah. and uh, and uh, maybe you know pouring you a glass of wine where he tells you what a, like what a twat you are and that hole in your face. Um, <laughs> it's just brilliant, you know. And it's yeah, um, yeah, really. Really, it's even better listening to the, the whole lyrics. Um, but yeah, the song itself musically was superb as well. Really, yeah, really, good. it really, really um, was. Jumanji, very really impressed. Yeah, great, great shout, Jumanji. This was this was a great one. You got both of us uh, digging yeah. it very much. So, um, I guess all that out of the way, I'll kind of wrap things up here. John, uh, Joe, thanks again for offering this up. Great tune. Um, everybody out there in the listening audience, let us know what you thought of it. If there's other O'Rourke stuff we need to check out, please let us know. Um, please, no 38 minute entire album tracks, though. That's excessive. It's on the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, John, you seem pretty familiar with it. Uh, maybe you could just do an episode where you give us a synopsis of it. <laughs> I, think the, uh, I think the action's what everybody wants to see. <laughs> You're gonna get a reaction. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for offering this up. Guys, let us know other tracks we need to listen to. If you've got any other artists, songs by other artists or whatever you want us to scope out, this or any of our other videos is a perfectly good venue to posit that um, suggestion, and we will run with it. It's a growing list, so we're slowly chipping away, but hopefully we're keeping you guys pleased and interested with all the varying different stuff we've got coming in from everybody. We really do appreciate that. It helps keep our Fridays fresh takes a little bit off john and i as far as having to come up with another one of our songs although we've got uh, probably at this point an endless list but it's just nice to 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 be exposed to uh other people's tastes outside of just our own although you know it's working out for us this, this you know two years into this now um but yeah all that out of the way like share subscribe if you'd be so inclined uh and hopefully john and i will see all y'all and plenty more 
on the next installment of The Audio Files. We'll see you later, guys.